Hello friends. So once again, welcome to my channel. And in today's video, you will be discussing one very beautiful problem in our computer organization architecture called as CAS coherence problem. And when we discuss this, and one more thing is there that valid bit. With each block in the cache memory, we used to have a extra bit that is called as valid bit. What is the importance of it and how it is related to cache coherence that we are going to see next. So what is cache coherence problem? A bit called as valid bit is provided for each block. So see, if we are using write back cache, then with each block, we used to have what? One dirty bit. Like that, one valid bit is also there. But please do not confuse both of them. Dirty bit indicates the block is modified during its cache residency, but main memory is not updated by that. Only cache copy is updated, right? And valid bit indicates if the block contains valid data, then the bit is set to one, else it is zero. So what is the meaning of that valid data that we are going to see there? Or I will say that when we say the data is invalid, that we will discuss here. So valid bits are set to zero when the very first time we switch on the power, right? Whenever we start the system, that time for all the blocks present in the cache memory, the valid bits are set to zero. And if the valid bit is found to be zero for a block, then we used to say that it is a miss for that block. Suppose uh, address matching is there, tag matching is there, but valid bit is zero. That means the data is not correct. So it will be considered as a cache miss. When a block is loaded into the cache for the first time, the valid bit is set to one. That means, see, initially all are having valid bit as zero. Then we'll get your failure that is miss. Then we will get the block from the main memory into the cache. And then the very first time when we will load the page, uh, the block into the cache, uh, then we used to set is valid bit to be one. This part is clear. Now see, data uh, means when this will be set to one, zero and all other things that I'm going to discuss. Data transfer, suppose we are performing between main memory and the disk. And here we are using say DMA technique. What is DMA technique? By now we know DMA technique will bypass the processor in the process and it will directly do the communication between the main memory and the disk, right? And see the communication can happen in both the directions. That means data can come from this to the main memory or from main memory to the disk also, we can send the data, right? So first we'll discuss that from this to the main memory, we are bringing the data. Now see, whenever we will do this, right? Then what will happen, say, uh, when a new block is transferred from the disk to the main memory, block I using DMA technique, whose one copy also exists in the cache, then due to this DMA transfer, the cache copy will become stale, right? So please understand what I'm talking is, see, we are bypassing the, uh, your processor and we are bypassing the cache also, right? Whenever we are doing this DMA transfer, that time we are not looking into whatever is there in cache and all, that time we are not considering. We are transferring the data between the main memory and the disk. Now suppose, say, this is my main memory, right? This is my main memory and this is my cache memory, right? One block I of main memory is present in the cache memory, right? One block of main memory, that block number I of main memory, is present in some block number K in the uh, main, uh, cache memory, right? This is block I of main memory is present at some location in the cache memory. By the mapping technique we discussed, uh, we know that what will be the value of K. Based on mapping technique, the K will come. The point is that this block I, one copy is there in the cache, right? Now see what will happen. Say we are performing a DMA operation. And during DMA operation, we get something from the disk to the main memory into this block I. We got something into the main memory from the disk, right? From here, we got something into the main memory. Now see, now it will contain some different data. Now it will contain some different data. So when the processor generates one address for this block, say one address K is generated, then that for that address K, we will find the data in the cache. But the address for whose for whom the, the processor has generated the address means the data for which the processor has generated the address k actually contains 
some different data in the main memory right because of our this dma transfer previously here it was containing say again i'll draw the diagram say my main memory one block is there it was having 10 20 some something something is there then one copy of it is also there in the cache 10 20 and there's all copies is there right now due to dma operation i got something from the cache sorry from the disk into the main memory right into this position only so i got something here now this data is 1000 2000 something different different right when processor will access this uh, means when processor will generate one address it generates address with respect to main memory so it will generate say address 1000 and for that it is mapping to this particular position so whatever is actually is there in main memory 1000 its copy is not there in the cache it is containing some different data why it is happening so because we have got something from the disk into the main memory by DMA operation. So if we have done so, and that means what? Into some block, we have got some data from the disk using your DMA operation, whose one copy was previously present in the cache memory. Then it is our duty to make this block invalid in the cache memory. So we will make the valid bit corresponding to this to be zero right otherwise we will access wrong data for different different memory address for this particular block in the cache memory right so that only i am trying to mean here when a new block is transferred from the disk to the main memory into block i using your dma technique where i am talking about in the main memory whose one copy also is there in the cache memory it can because what is there in cache something from the main memory only so one copy of it also exists in the cache. Now due to this DMA transfer, cache copy will become stale, right? As now the main memory block I contains some different data. The point is understood. So to maintain the consistency, to maintain the correctness, what we will do, we'll make the block I, the block I, wherever it is present in the cache memory, maybe any position M, any block M contains the main memory block I, then this particular block's valid bit will be set to zero, right? Then only it will be a miss, and then we will get the correct block into the this position after a miss operation, right? So cache block J corresponding to main memory block I need to be invalidated, and that is the valid bit will be cleared to zero for cache block J. What is J? The block J contains the main memory block I and that has been modified due to the DMA operation. So cache copy will also become invalid. This part is clear. Then second one is what happens if the data is transferred from the main memory to the disk? Because see here this is my secondary memory. This is my main memory, right? So see the DMA operation does not say that from here to here only it will go something or here to here only it will come. Last example we have done from secondary to main memory. Now from main memory to disk also we can transfer the data. Then where will be the problem? That we need to understand. And what we are doing is we are having the cache memory also, right? So one main memory block I is there and it is I and it is also present in the cache memory block K, right? Inside this one data item was there whose value was your 100 here. So initially it was 100 also here, right? Then after your some operations, uh, means what we have done, we have changed it to say some value 120. We change it to 120. And what we are doing, we are using write back protocol for write operation. Hope you remember what is write back protocol. Write back protocol says you modify the data in the cache and do not update it instantly in the main memory. Only keep a indication of that. How do I keep the indication? By maintaining the dirty bit. Dirty bit is there for one block, not for one location. So for the block, the dirty bit will be set to one if at all some location in the block is modified during its cache residency. So this block's dirty bit will be set to one, right? Now see what I'm doing is, the scenario is clear. Now what I'm doing is, from memory to the secondary memory, I'm transferring the data. Then I'm transferring the block I, into the secondary memory, right? Due to any reason, right? So you know the reasons from your operating system also. So suppose I'm transferring this block I into the secondary memory. 
then what will happen the problem is now whatever there is in i is not the most recent data that is actually for this particular block represents in the system the most recent copy of i is present in the cache memory only and main memory is still now not updated then what i have to do so that i will discuss now so see in this case the data in the cache may have been changed i have shown you that example 100 to 120 and is indicated by the dirty bit because i am using write back protocol the copies of the data in the cache and the main memory are different and whenever at two places the data is are there and their values are not same then this is nothing but my coherence problem and it is related to my cache memory so it is called as cache coherence problem right to solve this cache coherence problem many protocols are there and this is also a good research topic right how to solve the cache coherence here right now i am discussing for a uni processor system between memory and cache but if we have your multi processor system each one is having their own caches right they are taking the data from one shared memory then each local cache may change the data and other should also know the data is been modified so many things are there related to this cache coherence problem right now whatever i have discussed probably that is understood what i mean is that means i am transferring data from memory to the disk but the most recent copy is there in the cache then what we will do we know that one copy is there in the cache then before doing this dma transfer we will forcibly write back the data into the main memory and then only the transfer will be done what i say that see here your main memory here your cache is there and here your secondary memory so i am going to transfer this block from here to here and is one copy is there in cache which is been modified then before doing this transfer first this block is written back to the main memory and then only this transfer will be done then only we will be transferring the correct data so this is related to your valid bit and cache coherence problem please do not confuse your valid bit and dirty bit valid bit indicates the data is valid right and uh, dirty bit indicates that the data is modified so this much is there in this video and if you are getting from my explanations then please like my videos and subscribe to my channel thank you